This is your girl, Yannick Taylor, a.k.a. Priestess, hostess of Conversations with the Priestess. Here's a preview of what you may hear on Conversations with the Priestess. We weren't meant for monogamy, let's be honest. Like, we have needs, let's be real. And communicating that, what you want, what you don't want, what sets up... Now, this drink is brown, because I learned something. Since I'm older, I can't do brown liquor anymore. Also, I noticed since I started on hormone replacement there at HRT in 2015, me and certain liquors don't mix, don't mix well. I don't know whether. And I recognize that a lot of men love to be dominated by women. And that's because men are seen as these leaders, as this big alpha male dominant thing, dominant being. And because they're put on this pedestal of being leader, sometimes they want to be submissive. Back when I cosplayed a butch queen in South Carolina around 2011, I was on Craigslist. This is when Craigslist was bumping and before they had gotten rid of the personal section. I hope you enjoyed that preview. Join me on Wednesdays at 9 p.m. for Priestess After Dark. Full video versions of the podcast can be found on patreon.com forward slash CWT Priestess. And join me on Fridays at noon for our regular Friday post. Live, love, and be free. Smooches. Available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, anywhere you download and stream podcasts. For Pillar Sports, a podcast for sports fans, made by sports fans. Join Chris and Randy every week as they dive deep into football, basketball, baseball, and professional wrestling. Catch for Pillar Sports on all major platforms. And remember, keep on talking sports. Auto insurance can all seem the same until it comes time to use it. So don't get stuck paying more for less coverage. Switch to USA Auto Insurance and you could start saving money in no time. Get a quote today. Restrictions apply. Although it's been said many times, many ways, Merry Christmas to you. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is your girl, the priestess, never your mistress, Shani Taylor. Honey, here's another episode of Conversations with the Priestess. So get your libations and get your ancestors and sit down and have a conversation with your girl. What's going on, everybody? It's your girl, the priestess, never your mistress, Yanni T. Thank you all so much for staying with your girl on Conversations with the Priestess, even with my inconsistencies. Y'all bear with me. I have been in a place, and many of you all know about some situations. If you follow me on the Beagle app, my name there is Yanni T. Music. So check your girl out. She's doing wondrous things. Oh my gosh. So I pray that you all have been well. So much has happened. We have um, the new, new Omicron mutation or version of COVID-19, which I'm very over right now with this whole shebang. But people, please go get your vaccinations and get your boosters. If you want to remain safe, please do it. I'm not going to go into a whole bunch of detail. But just, uh, just use caution. Um, everything has been well. Things have been well with me. Things have been great. Y'all know me. I don't get too much into the pop culture stuff of the world unless it's very important. So follow me on social media with that. But this is just a quick episode. So many of you are wondering um, what transpired during the uh, Thanksgiving holiday And this is what has transpired. So many of you all know that I was getting ready to write a letter um, to my family. Well, I didn't get to write the letter. I did not get to send it off. The reason being is I decided after consulting with some family and friends to show up, just show up and I, of course, had many conversations with my uncle, had many conversations uh, with the aunts, 
that I came out to. Um, the experience was very pleasant. Um, overall, my holiday was great. I was just glad to be amongst family because it's the first time since my grandmother passed in 2020 since we've all been together. Um, and the last Thanksgiving I spent with my family was in 2018. That was the last time I was able to really spend Thanksgiving with them because of my life and work schedule. And then grandmother passed and then boom. And I showed up and of course I came out to my aunt um, and she was like, well, I don't condone it, which I'm not asking you to accept it, you know, or condone it. Um, she was like, well, um, you know, I don't condone it, but you know, I don't judge you. But when I came out to her, um, she also goes behind my back and tells some relatives, oh, well, I can change her. I can make her who she is supposed to be. And I'm like, honey, you don't make that call. That's my life and my testimony and my story. So um, I, I went home and I showed up. I ended up staying with my best friend, Nova. I see you, girl. One of my bestest friends in the world. Um, she and I um, basically spent the holiday together. And the great part is that we checked out Terrell Grice's millionth show and we had a great time we did clark sisters choreography we shot the breeze you know talked our junk played on the apps and just talked about life and it was good being with my best friend for a few days like oh my gosh i felt so at peace not a care in the world and it felt so good to get out of dc for a while so of course you know your girl was grateful and thankful for all of that but also it I had fun being in my hometown. Oh, I had fun being in my hometown. And the city has changed so much. And I'm going to go into the reactions in just a moment. Um, but it felt so good um, going to my hometown. I um, rode through town. And the it, it reeked of small town Christmas. Like um, one of those cheesy... Um, Hallmark movies or sort of like the Christmas movies where somebody moves to the uh, city and you know the familiar storyline they move to the city they come back home and things look different and when I got home it looked so much different you know than what I was accustomed to like you really saw the difference there and I um, rode past my high school um, ran into some old friends um you know, ran into people that knew me from childhood or that knew the person that left there, so to speak. And it felt good to be there. Um, I did write by that, by that one particular aunt's house, who shall not be named, Sister Voldemort. Um, she was like, and is still a fixture in my life that I don't fuck with right now. So... I rode by her house. Mind you, I knew her and her husband were home because um, they had the door open. They only keep the door open. This is a country thing. They'll keep the door open while they're in the house. Um, if they live in a secluded area, like very backwoods type shit, you know, you can't do that everywhere anymore. Okay. So um, I rode by, I was tempted to stick up my middle finger, but I didn't until I got off the street. I just rode by the house rode past it again and went to my uncle's house and it it was an experience being there um i did get a little emotional um because it's the first time that i've been in south carolina for a holiday and my grand not being able to see my grandmother was different um i didn't get to see everybody that i wanted to see um because of everyone traveling and different plans but it it was freaking awesome and one of the fun parts is I got to hang out with one of my cousins and my aunts. And she filled me in on everything that had been going on in the town. Even talked about plans to build a new high school. How the town is growing. Who didn't marry who. Who didn't slept with who. All of that. And it, it was a great time. It was a great time. It was a great time. Holiday was lit. Um, just being able to... I, just able to go back and be in a different mindset did so much for me. Um, it it really did a lot for me. It, it let me know that I'm growing. Let's me know that 
life has changed. And one of the things that really touched me, and y'all, if I get a little emotional on this episode, I am not sorry. Um, my uncle's barbershop. He sh- my uncle opened his barbershop over 25 years ago in Woodrow, South Carolina, and he was one of the only black barbers in town. But the first one to have a major shop on Main Street in Woodruff. And he's retired now. Um, and he was trying to work, but he decided it was just too much after some challenges. So he shut down the barbershop in 20, December of 2020, 2020. And he held on to his faith and he said, you know what? I'm going to let it go. I'm going to shut down the business and just do, you know, mobile when I can. You know, he had his little setup. And I congratulated him on the retirement. And the owner of the building ended up converting it into a bar. And it looks so much more different. And it's like, I'm thankful for the pictures that I have of the barbershop. It it was like, I could see life changing. It is changing. And just to see... How far life has come. You saw the, I saw the beginning of an era and an era in for my uncle. Um, because that barbershop was what got me through school. That barbershop is what got me through college. That barbershop is the reason why I am the person I am now. And I'm thankful for that. And my uncle is my father. When I say that, my uncle has been the father that I did not have growing up from my biological father, you know. And I'm so grateful for my uncle because that's been my ride or die from day one. Um, he's been there through, through the ugliest of times. And even when I came out as queer, He struggled a little bit, but he respected me and tries to understand. And even when I find found out that I was HIV positive has been supportive of me from day one. And I I just love him so much. That's, that's, that's my pops. I call him pops. Yes. I have a somewhat of a relationship with my father. It's complicated, but I'm so grateful for my uncle. Um, even with me coming home and living in my truth, which Um, We're going to talk about after the break coming up, but I'm so grateful. And that, that also was special for me coming home to see how the town has changed. Um, Granted, unfortunately, um, my uncle's, one of my uncle's friends did pass away and her home going was that was um, the day after Thanksgiving and my heart felt for their family. I don't do funerals. I haven't done a funeral since my godmother played uh since my grandmother I'm sorry since my grandmother passed and it has been it has been a hell of a journey um but just being able to visit even though there was so much going on I still found comfort when I was there like the the nights the Thanksgiving night and the last few nights that I was there like I ended up falling asleep on my uncle's couch like I used to do when I lived there when I was a kid um, growing up there and just reminiscing. And then I got to see my dog Bentley. Oh my gosh. Y'all don't know. It's killing me not to have my dog with me. I miss my dog. Ugh. It's something about a girl and her dog. And that's my baby. Like I call home and have conversations with the dog. I'm not ashamed, okay? I have conversations with the dog. And Oh my gosh, that's my connection to him. And there are times where I miss my dog. Like, oh my gosh, my uncle sends me pictures of him. And then my uncle has a dog as well. Oh my gosh, I played with her the whole time. She's knocking my dog out of the way to get attention and love. So I had, it got to the point to where I had to put one dog on one side, one dog on the other side and just make them play nice. Like, uh, but it it was an awesome trip. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't have had it any other way but I am so grateful and thankful um, to seeing people that I haven't seen in a while that recognized who I was so I'm going to take a quick break and grab some water and some hot tea from downstairs um, 
I am going to take a quick break. So here's a word from our sponsors. Four Pillar Sports, a podcast for sports fans, made by sports fans. Join Chris and Randy every week as they dive deep into football, basketball, baseball, and professional wrestling. Catch for Pillar Sports on all major platforms. And remember, keep on talking sports. Girl, let me tell you about Maven. They got some good hair. Your girl, the priestess, loves using Maven. If y'all seen some of my hairstyles, Maven did that, honey. We have good frontals, closures, everything that you need, honey. Not only that, but we have awesome lace fronts. We have human hair, virgin hair, honey, Remy Yaki, whatever you need. We got it. You can even color it. When you get it, if you want to change the style, you can do that too. So go on over to my special link, priestessbeauty.maven.com. Sign up to get special offers and you get free shipping. What else can you do? Honey, the holidays are coming up and you want to look good going into the new year. So get those bundles today. Get you a good lace front, girl. All right. So live, love, and be free. Again, that's priestessbeauty.maven.com. Your priestess has returned. So I... Welcome back to the show, darlings. Welcome back. So, <clears throat> again, we were talking about the holidays. So, of course, with the holidays comes Christmas music. And, of course, of course, we've been playing All I Want for Christmas is You by Mariah Carey. However, I've been listening to the Ella Fitzgerald Christmas album. Oh, my God. It is freaking Good. When I tell you I live, I live for Ella Fitzgerald. Oh my gosh, her voice is just so silky, so perfect, so classic, and I absolutely love it. And one of the things that I miss sometimes is really, you know, sitting back and listening to Ella Fitzgerald on a Saturday night. I haven't done that in so long, so I'm going to have to get back to that. But I've also been playing The Temptations Christmas, um, Mesa Leak's Christmas album. And I, I just love Christmas music. And it, it reminds me of growing up in South Carolina and trimming the tree at my grandmother's house and my cousins and I singing Christmas carols whenever we got together. And just all around that community time and most of the time food. It was something about the holiday food that'll get you. So that 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 has done so much for me. But since I mentioned home, so many people are wondering what happened. So many people have been wondering what happened. I'm going to leave it at that. So <clears throat> I did go home. I was dressed to the nines. I ended up going to sleep at my best friend's house and resting. So I finally went into town later on that evening um, and spent time with my uncle. Mind you, at this time, I had a coffin nail manicure. It was the bomb, y'all. It was the bomb. It was the bomb. It looks so good. So what I ended up doing is I went down to my uncle's house. Of course, nails done, face, you know, lightly beat. And I walked in. My uncle didn't exchange words. He said, wash your hands and go in there and get you something to eat and come sit down and watch TV with me. So when I sat down, he looked at me. He dropped his head and he had to gather himself because body snatched. Y'all see, I got the girls, okay? You know. So he goes and he goes into his room, comes back. He's trying to wake up um, from snapping. And we had a conversation like nothing had changed and it was freaking awesome like for real and I enjoyed that community well the next but the next day I went into town before I went to my uncle's house and I stopped at one of my auntie's houses I stopped at the store to get a charger for my iPhone because my dumb behind leaves my charger at my uncle at my best friend's house and I needed it so I ended up getting a new charger and while I was in the stores, one of the deacons that knew me from my uncle's church looked at me. I had on big pink sunglasses that got stolen, my I add. Ugh, we'll talk about that in a minute. And then after that, um, they recognized who I was. And I was, I was like, hey, you know, just barely spoke. 
because they were staring so damn hard. And he just looked and walked on. And I ended up getting in the car with my cousin and riding around town. And people saw me at the rear lane. They waved. I said. And so somebody called my cousin. was like, girl, who was that woman in the car with you? She was like, oh, that's my that's my homegirl, Yanni. Who? Yanni Taylor. That was like, uh-uh. That, that looked like. She was like, no, that's my homegirl. So we end up going to uh, somebody's house to pick up something. And they looked at the car. I'm looking the other way. They was like, oh, you didn't went to D.C. and got bougie on us. And when I turned around, there was a girl, who was that woman with you? She was like, that's my cousin, Yanni T. They was like, oh, and they finally put two and two together. And his mom, she's... um you know, suffering from a little bit of dementia. She was like, is that the, is that the, you know, boy that used to sing at church? Because at this point, I haven't had any surgeries done yet, um, which I'll get into later on near the end of the podcast. So that was like, no, that's somebody else. That's her home girl. So when I walk into my aunt's house, mind you, it was kind of warm in South Carolina. So I had on a light sweater, body snatched, tight jeans, nasty shoe on, nails done, makeup beat. And my um, aunt says, hey girl, you're serving body. Oh my. And she said, yo, beat is everything. So we started talking And she said, are you sure you want to do this? I said, yes, ma'am, I'm ready. And we had conversations. However, we had to, my cousin and I had to educate her because she was like, well, you know, you'll always be my nephew with said dead name. And she was like, that's not going to change, but I respect you. So we had to educate her on pronouns. And even, you know, when it comes to church, how I would dress, she was like, can you, dress normal. I was like, no, I can't do that because how am I going to do that? And I'm a woman and it's just teaching her the language. And she's been very receptive and I love it. Um, I have drafted another letter that I'm going to edit very soon and I'm going to send out, um, ahead of Christmas in case I'm able to go home, even in the case that I'm not, so they can know what to expect coming up. And this is a journey. Um, I've already lost some family and that's okay. That's okay. But when I finally got to my uncle's house, I walked through the door. He stepped back, looked, took my coat off because I was insecure about my body, sat down and like nothing happened. And he did say that he couldn't take it. He couldn't handle that, but he respected me. Granny, he didn't dead name me and... I let, I, this holiday, because I didn't feel like a whole tussle, I just wanted to be with my family. I let him kind of navigate that for himself. Plain and simple. And I'm grateful to have been able to have that moment with my uncle because that's been like my father. And his friends saw me, they didn't say anything, they just went with it, you know. And having family on my side, that means so much to me. And then coming back, went to church. I was embraced. And it it's just, oh my gosh, I'm going to cry right now if I'm not careful because it meant so much. Now, it really wasn't all that bad. But on top of that, I was going to go to Georgia to see one of my aunties. My auntie says to me the day, two days, the night before, um, Tuesday before Thanksgiving, she said, well, you know, your uncle's family is coming and I'm just thinking about the reaction time. I'm thinking about, you know, how people are going to react, what people will think, what, you know, his family's going to think. And I'm like, well, dang, you're my blood. And it's like, okay, just tell me you don't want me to come because you're embarrassed. You have no intentions of defending me. You want to keep up appearances? Cool. That's fine. That hurt. That hurt. But I kept pushing. I kept 
having this plan, you know, I'm just going to spend it with my uncle. And if push comes to shove, I can spend it with my best friend or, you know, or wait till my best friend comes back from their family and I'll just ride around, you know, I'll go back to my friend's house, stream on Beagle, work on some stuff and sleep, you know, watch TV instead of, you know, I'm at a point now to in certain things, I'd rather not be bothered with people. I'd rather be alone than be unhappy and uncomfortable in my atmosphere. That's where I'm at. So just having a place, it felt so good. Um, It's just, it's just amazing. And also in black families, word travels fast. Of course, I have one aunt that's already told it that I'm trans. I have another aunt that when I came out to her, I know she went and told it because my aunt said, be careful. She said, and I know she taught my family. My It's my aunts that fight. So they have a lot of issues going on, which has nothing to do with me. So the aunt that I came out to and the aunt that already knew had words about yours. Truly, my aunt's like, yo, they are doing their thing. They're grown. And the other aunt said, well, I'm going to change, you know, wrong gender. And I'm like, <clears throat> okay, you know, my aunt said, but don't worry about her. Don't worry about her. She said, you're invited to my house personally for for Christmas. Don't worry about no other bullshit. She said, if they treat you bad, come down here. And my aunt was like, just don't be extra. And I got it about how my aunt was phrasing that she was just, she's cautious because she has small grandkids and you know how kids are. So it's like, auntie, I will be fine. Like whatever happens, happens. But I'm grateful that I've had a support system around me. And thank you to my support system. You all know who you are. I'm grateful to y'all. I'm grateful to you all. You all have been just so wonderful to me. And I'm, I'm so grateful for that. So grateful so grateful, so grateful. Um, <clears throat> right now, I'm taking it one step at a time and I'm not ready to step back into some areas of my life yet because I want to start, I want to get the people acclimated to me fully because I just really started dressing out in ministry and that's a long story. That was a point in my transition. My transition is not like everybody else, so I'm out there now and I feel so relieved. My life is so much better and I'm, I'm just grateful. I'm just very grateful. I'm just very grateful right now. So with that being said, thank you all so much for coming on Conversations with the Priestess and listening to me rant and rave. Y'all let them be free from the Priestess and smooches. Thank you all for listening to this episode of Conversations with the Priestess. You can support this podcast by going to patreon.com forward slash Yanni Taylor. You can also support us by hitting up our cash app. That's dollar sign Yanni T Music as well as supporting our various affiliate programs. Hey, this helps keep the lights on and this will help take this podcast to higher heights and deeper depths. So live, love, and be free. Smooches. Also, the music that you hear is Just The Way You Are by M. Fazal. The great visionary leader of India, Mahatma Gandhi said, it is health that is real wealth and not pieces of gold and silver. Listen to the Healthy Grocer radio show on your favorite podcast platform. We know that health is our greatest wealth and we will be discussing all aspects of natural healing. Explore everything from supplements, superfoods, and healthy lifestyle choices to help conquer stress and boost productivity. Top industry experts and natural health professionals join us for a deep dive into our healing journey. You can find the Healthy Grocer Radio Show on demand every day, wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And remember, health is your greatest wealth.